up. It really picks up. Oh boy. <laughs> I'd say we. The weather report said seven mile an hour. This gusts. is higher than that. Oh, this feels like. Yeah, could be could be closer to ten right now. Which is for sure the maximum I would ever fly this thing, and it sucks in a way to have to be a maiden in such conditions. Alright, here we go. The pellet is on. For posterity, this is a, uh, a 70-38 propeller. So it's 7 inches long and uh, 38 pitch. With a 3 cell battery. So it should have some real oomph. Fashion design that's been modernized a little bit, but you still have to take the whole bottom wing off and muck around with the interplane struts in order to get the battery in there. <laughs> so, it's actually pretty funny. Not exactly. I would say this plane is the exact opposite of a ready to fly plane. This is a box of sticks. Put it on low rates. Got the battery timer set to five minutes. That sounded like the happy noise. All right, everything's working. It sounds nice. Yeah, it's a, it's. Built as well as I know how to build anything. It's balanced perfectly side to side, front to back. The CG should be spot on. It just doesn't have its cowling on at the moment because we're putting some finishing touches on the detailing. Now that beep we're hearing every so often is a little disconcerting. I don't know what that is. Well, it's the receiver saying hello. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know that that necessarily means anything bad, but it's uh, not the world's most expensive receiver. To be honest, it's a like a five dollar Hobby King orange receiver. Because it's only a three channel plane. And I don't know why it makes that noise. But it continues to have signal and you know work. I know when I when I test it out on the workbench it does that. It just doesn't seem to have any importance. <laughs> I'm sure it means something, but I don't know what. Alright, so we're all out of excuses now, we gotta fly it. <laughs> Go over here and get a little open space. The is actually coming crosswind from here, so I'm gonna try to launch it at a bit of an angle. And she's up. A lot of power. Okay. Yeah, the battery. That was a low speed, very low speed thing. 
right down on the nose, which is a very solid part. Prop saver did that. There's no damage to the plane. Um, I can tell you that this plane really wants to take up to the sky. Strut disconnected, but that's easy to fix. You just push that back in. Oh, sorry, cabling strut. Now the punch strut. And oh, the punch strut did come out. Made a tiny little dent in the covering. Easily fixed with an iron. Oh, no, easily, not the covering. Easily fixed with an iron. It's not a, it's not a cut. It's just a little indentation. Uh, the wind is definitely, definitely affecting it. It's very light plane for its size and got a lot of wing area for the weight that it has. I would be willing to try this again. Uh, it would be really nice if the wind was not as strong. 10 mile an hour wind right now, probably 7 to 10 miles an hour. If it's a 0 to 5, I'd be much happier. Now, all the bench tests I did told me that a two-cell battery would work, but I was advised to use a three-cell to have the extra oomph. And I can tell you, when I give this anything more than 10% to 15% travel, it wants to really, really fly high and fast. Can you zoom in on that white flag on that zoom down? That is flapping really deep. It's flapping in the breeze really hard. very windy. Right now. Film the leaves on the tree. I did already. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the weather system. The clouds moving towards us. Wow, well, I just threw that little tiny foamy in this. I think I could, you know, a lot more at stake if this breaks, obviously. Pause for a second. Go for it. Uh, all right, she's very, very reactive to the rudder, too. Need to have a little. Yeah, you gotta tone the rudder down a lot. sound very good. Yeah, I feel a little crack in the wood here. Tiny little crack. This so, is off. Yeah, well that's going to happen with any impact. Um. Uh, so, it's got way, way too much control authority in the rudder. I can't, I, I'm trying really hard not to over, over correct or over control, but it's pitching and rolling and That's a shame. Uh, I can tone it down. I wonder if it's in good enough shape to keep flying it. I don't really see anything terrible here. Um, you could have, like, broken something you can't see, though, and that wouldn't be, it's like, damage just the structure. Part of the problem uh, is that I don't have my screwdriver with me to tamp this screw all the way down. Um, so the bottom wing is actually a little bit flopsy. Tiny, tiny. I mean, it's probably while it's flying, it's not doing anything. And maybe it had a bit of shock absorption on the... Ah, oh, see, look here. 
I don't know if you can see that. That happened. So yeah. we got to put a little spot of glue to hold that. But um, that's the only damage that it suffered. And that's very easy to fix. I don't even have to do any anything to it. Um, but there's no question that it's got too much rudder authority. If you look at this rudder, even on low rates, look at the size of that sucker and how far it moves. So we're going to have to tone that way down. Let's go to servo setup and we'll go to travel and we'll go to rudder. And take it down to 50%. That's a lot closer, and then we're going to also we're going to also go to Expo, and we're going to go to Rudder, and we're going to go and give it like 20, 20% Expo maybe. Maybe more, 25. Just for the record, I'm calling it. He's going to crash, and it's going to break. Uh, what it needs is down elevator mixed in with the um, throttle. It doesn't climb like crazy, giving it enough power to have lift. And here comes that big wing. Alright, let's take this thing in and just be patient. Fly all day with this big battery. That's a good thing. You see how it wants to nose down the second I cut any power? I gotta cut power at some point to land. And I definitely wanna cut power when the wind's blowing right at it and it's making it shine. Uh, that's not too many variables to deal with their maiden flight. It could be after the rain, you know. Would have been better to land that on the uh, on the asphalt and not have it nose over, but I don't think it was going very fast when it hit the grass. No, it wasn't. I wouldn't be surprised if that broken part in the wing just flipped open again, but.
Yeah, see the prop saver does that on purpose. So that's normal. And actually the wing is fine. No damage at all. Just a little nose over. And uh, you know, the uh, interplane struts. Actually, well this one popped out, but by and large, yeah, this one popped out too, but that they they come on and off obviously because you got to take them off to get the battery out. And uh, yeah, normally I have my field box with a screwdriver. This thing would be tight, although I don't think that's really having an impact because it's it's basically staying where it's supposed to be through flight. So uh, successful flights. Um, learned a little bit, made some adjustments, got it to fly better by the third time. Too windy to really maiden it properly. And there were some folks here visiting their departed loved ones, so probably time to leave anyway since I saw lightning in the sky a little while ago. It's definitely swirling in and the wind's at least 10 miles an hour right now. And at least we can say we did not wuss out. True. <laughs> We tried. We did what we should. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to say one thing. Before today, it was a beautiful model. As of now, it's a beautiful airplane. Now you can call it an airplane. Not, until it flies, it's not really an airplane. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs>